calories do not exist or do they well let's find out so first before you start a diet or you start an aggressive weight loss protocol meticulously counting calories every single day and you know driving all the family members mad and you know all your team members mad or in a restaurant or client dinners whatever you are doing with counting calories right before that think about what calories are or what they are supposed to be right what you are told calories are so calorie uh, and in general that's a measure of energy right this is how we measure like how much heating value some materials have how much energy you have taken in during the day how much energy you have burned right how can we measure it of course from the heat that a certain activity generates or from the heat that a certain material can produce when burned oxidated right i don't want to get into the chemistry part of it too much but think about what energy is at all right because we mentioned calories as a measure of energy okay how much energy you burn during the day but what is energy right so just i want you to zoom in and then zoom out massively think about the whole universe from the smallest particles to the biggest units right by biggest units i, I don't mean me i know i'm a unit but Let's start from the smallest ones, right? So we have these nanoparticles, we have these atoms, electrons, neutrons, you name it, right? Each of them has like a nuclei, something in the center, right? So for example, an atom has a nuclei and around that other like smaller particles, right? I'm pretty sure those who are better in chemistry than me know what I'm talking about. Better than physics and me know what I'm talking about. But what is in between? What is in between the nanoparticles and the nuclei, right? So imagine the nuclei is here and there is a big ass space over here, which is like 99.99999% of the whole atom, right? So what is in between? If that's not matter, if something is not material, something is not matter in the universe, what is that? That's energy, right? So if you look at it from a quantum physics um, point of view, you can say that energy is almost everything. Because me right now, talking to you, I'm actually 99.99999% energy and only 0.1% matter, right? So if everything is energy, then we can say everything is calories. But why does that happen if you eat junk food all the time, you get fat, right? And if you eat in a balanced, high protein, mostly whole food focused way, you are much less likely to get fat. And you can still eat a lot. You can still eat sometimes more. There are overweight people, a lot of my clients came to me this way, exactly this way that they have been eating little, but their choices, their choices of food were so poorly organized, I would say, that they still started accumulating and kept accumulating fat mass, right? And this is something that you want to prevent. This is something that you want completely gone from your life. You want a way that you can keep burning fat, gaining muscle mass, improving your body composition. You want to be slim, you want to be fit, you want to be looking good in shirts. But how do you do that, right? What are the right foods to eat, you always ask, or how many calories should I eat? Well, the truth is, as I mentioned before, not all calories are created equal, right? Because everything is calories. Fat is calories, protein is calories, carbohydrates are calories, the skin on, you know, my, my muscles, above my muscles, that's calories. My entire being is calories. Some people might even say my soul is made of calories too because that's just a concentration of energy, right? So if everything is calories, how come that there are some fat people and there are some slim people, right? How, how can you make this happen, right? The only valid explanation for this is that it actually doesn't matter what kind of sources you bring in the calories from. So just let me show you an example, right? So here we have this bottle of vodka, which is, by the way, very good for certain occasions and stuff like that. But a thousand calories of this 
might not equal in outcomes to a thousand calories of this lean organic grass-fed Paraguayan ground beef right so eating a thousand calories of ground beef let me do very quickly the the math for you so about 100 grams of ground beef contains 20 grams of protein which is about 80 80 calories let's say uh, all the other stuff in there would give you like 120 calories so you can eat like more than a pound of ground beef just to get to a thousand calories I would say 1.5 pounds of ground beef would net you around a thousand calories meanwhile um, I think a couple of deciliters of this one already nets you around a thousand calories so would you rather drink vodka and get you know, get fat from it like you start you start accumulating the fat mass or eat a pound of this get absolutely full and still be below a thousand calories right so this is where you the confusion starts so calories don't exist or are they just not equal right let me show you another example you could eat candies i i don't have candies at home because i have this kind of rule that keep your panty or <laughs> <laughs> All right, now you got me. Keep your pantry clean, right? And your panty too, especially. Uh, girls, if you're watching this, you better do that. But the thing is, if I would have candies in my apartment right now, maybe just a pack of candies could be a thousand calories. But imagine eating a thousand calories of this. That would probably be around half a truckload of watermelon. Can you eat that in one sitting? Probably not, right? So again, it fills you up, it's satiating, and it's still not giving you that many calories. And if you eat a thousand calories of watermelon, first of all, congrats, you have a huge stomach capacity. Or might be, you, you might just broke the, the Guinness World Record, who knows? But the thing is, eating a thousand calories of watermelon versus eating a thousand calories of candies, even though in both of them, majority of these calories will be carbohydrates, but they are not the same, right? So that's why I think it's a good, better example because when I compare the vodka to the ground beef, of course, you might as well say that I'm comparing apples to oranges, right? Because that's, this is like a burnt sugar source, right? I mean, not an, I'm not an alcohol expert, but this is a source of protein and some healthy fats in the meantime so i don't want to compare like proteins and fats to carbohydrates but now we can definitely compare carbohydrates to carbohydrates right so if you compare watermelon to candy you would much rather eat a watermelon right you would much rather eat a thousand calories of watermelon instead of a thousand calories of candy and probably by 300 calories of watermelon you would be full absolutely packed right so this is my conclusion that okay everything in the universe is calories but why do you measure that why do you count that if you can just simply have food choices which never allow you to go above your caloric limitations so i would much rather focus on counting your protein targets or like measuring how much protein you eat a day because once you get that sorted you will have a healthy body composition where you're slim you're low body fat and the muscle mass is dominating you don't have to be like a big bodybuilder the next arnold schwarzenegger stuff like that you can just be someone with a slim waist a pretty decent upper body and a healthy body composition someone who is happy about himself right and um in the meantime <clears throat> sorry so in the meantime you want to make sure that you live a sustainable lifestyle eating the foods that you like. So if 80% of your nutrition consists of high protein, whole foods, or satiating carbs like watermelon, mandioca, potato, sweet potato, then you don't really have to worry about that remaining 20%. So even though not all sources of energy, or if you believe in the existence of calories, right? If you believe in quantum physics, if you say not all calories are created equal, even if that's true, because it, do, it is true, you can reserve that remaining 20% of your diet to your fun foods, right? Every once in a while, I eat a little pizza, right? Every once in a while, I eat a massive bowl of pancakes with ice cream, right? 
filled with that kind of caramel syrup and all that stuff. And sorry, I don't want to make you hungry right now. I just wanted to say that you can still keep eating your favorite foods. You can still be healthy. So the two are not mutually exclusive. And as long as you keep a high, pro high protein, whole food satiating diet, you don't have to worry about calories. So in this case, you can say that, okay, calories do not exist. I deny them. I don't care about quantum physics. I don't give a flying fuck about uh, atoms, you know, nanoparticles, whatever. You're not interested in that. So you can say calories don't exist. I eat whatever I want, but most of my food is big in size and low in energy, right? So you make sure that you never overeat this way and you can sustain not a diet, but a framework of nutrition for the rest of your life. So you can be strategic about it. So I hope this helped you. Hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to subscribe, press like, and let me know your thoughts below. And let me know, like I have a question to you. So write it down in the comment section. Do you count calories? Or have you ever had a coach who had you count calories, right? And how did it work for you? I'm really curious to know, guys. For example, with us here in the DemiCycle protocol, we do not count calories and we produce, I'm confident to say after helping over 50 people with the DemiCycle protocol that we produce superior results compared to those fitness coaches, health coaches, performance coaches who have their clients count calories. So that's why I say, if that helps you with your mindset, you can say that calories do not exist. And instead of counting calories, you are just following the simple and sustainable nutritional principles, right? And if you find this a little bit overwhelming or you feel like you need more accountability because you just can't stay consistent with your diet or you've been struggling with losing that extra 50, 60 or 70 pounds, right? So if you want to get rid of that and you need a surefire way of doing that so, feel free to join our free community through the link below or directly book a free call with us that's also in the description below. And let's see if we can craft up a plan for you which should work for you in the long term. So that was it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. And don't forget, calories don't exist.